All right, good Wednesday. Wow, it's time moving that fast already. Okay, well, good Wednesday evening, everybody, live and direct from have somewhere in Memphis. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. We again see the possibility of some very nice weather ahead, and as we go into the course of the next couple of days, if you have any questions about the forecast, we've got some very good news as we head into the course of the rest of the week. We'll talk more about that forecast coming up here in just a little bit. In the meantime, if you are just joining us, thanks for stopping by Periscope and Twitter for tonight. We again continue to see some very calm conditions across much of the area for right now, but once again, we could be seeing some changes Changes coming through as we go throughout the course of the next couple of days, so stay tuned for more on that. This is our usual video weather blog, and if you have any questions about what this is all about, feel free to email me at austin.onic at wreg.com. And to find out more about what is actually heading our direction, stay tuned because we'll have more information about the rest of the forecast coming up here in just a little while. We again see the possibility of some much more problems down across the Gulf of Mexico more than anything else into the course of the next couple of days. More over toward Florida than anything else, that's where we're going to be seeing the best possibility of anything really happening uh, into and around the Mid-South area. But so far, again, if you are just tuning in, things are, again, relatively quiet across much of the area. Let me see if I can get that taken care of so we can see that a little bit better for right now. There we go. That's better. Okay, we are live on Facebook for right now. At least, hopefully, we are live on Facebook. Had some difficulties with that into the last couple of days. Looks like we're getting an audio signal. Good news there. And so far, we're doing pretty good on Periscope and Twitter. So things looking pretty good. So let's go ahead and hop right into it and see what's going on in and around the Mid-South for this evening. It's pretty quiet for here. We do not have, again, too much of anything going on for right now. We do have, again, some clouds drifting on through. Take a look at our St. Francis camera into and around the area of Cordova, just south of I-40. Again, you can see a few clouds off into the distance. Peggy Speck on Facebook, thank you very much for that uh, check of the live situation there. Always glad to have some help on that. Usually we have producers here at House Onic. I'm doing everything myself. Kind of like my wife's uh, dot dot smile account. She's not doing a broadcast tonight, but she will in the near future. Currently, again, quiet across much of the area. Wish we could say the same as we look down into around the area of the Caribbean. This is radar from Puerto Rico, from San Juan. The terminal radar from the airport and this is just an absolutely incredible display tonight to see uh, something like this in such crisp detail uh, something you don't often get a chance to see Really incredible to see something like this uh, going on for tonight. The eye wall of Irma is passing just north of Puerto Rico and just moving a little farther to the north. So we are getting at least a bit of a break there. But unfortunately, back over towards several of the other parts of the British Isles and into around the Bahamas, probably not going to be so lucky. Winds inside of that monster right there at about 185 miles per hour. Pressure continues to drop. Unbelievable that this thing is getting stronger. The winds are not increasing, but wind speed is not necessarily the only gauge of hurricane strength. As the pressure drops and the atmosphere rushes around trying to fill up that low pressure gap in the atmosphere, that's indicative of a very strong storm. So Puerto Rico, hopefully not getting too much out of this. But once again, we're going to continue to watch this at this point. So to give you more details as to what's going on with the forecast here in the Mid-South there, we've got little, if anything, really happening by comparison. Let me switch over to the Memphis area. We are running behind on the schedule earlier tonight. It looks like we have, okay, we're back up to date and we have nothing. We have a little bit of insects and bird activity into and around the Mississippi Valley, but uh, that's about it at this point in time. Renee Vaughn Homewood, welcome from Forest City, Arkansas. Appreciate you dropping by. Mike Launius from Coldwater, Mississippi. Great question last night uh, on the weather. Thank you very much for tuning back in again. And Julia Cavallo, uh, welcome to the show. Are we going to get any uh, rain at this time, doesn't look like it. Uh, matter of fact, the forecast is pretty dry all the way on through. We'll take a look at that coming up here uh, in just a little bit. Sorry to keep knocking the camera around on Facebook, but have to rearrange everything as necessary. Let's go ahead and switch over and show you what's going on. Again, just some absolute monsters out there into the course of the last couple of days. Uh, Irma on the left, and now a new hurricane. Julio is now a hurricane as well, sitting off again into the Atlantic. Julio, not expected to be that much of a problem, uh, for now at least. It's expected to kind of curve north of Irma's path, 
could be a problem for Bermuda into the next couple of days. We'll talk more about that coming up here uh, in just a little while. Again, the main story everybody's talking about at this time is the tropics, and we've got a trifecta at this time of hurricanes taking place. You may not have heard about this uh, over the course of the last uh, several hours, but we again have a lot of activity going on right now. Katia in the Gulf of Mexico is also now a hurricane. So we have three hurricanes instead of one major hurricane and a tropical storm. Now the good news about Katia, it's going to be curving around and making its way back to the south and west. So it's going to be impacting southeast Mexico and will not be a threat to either Houston or the rest of the United States. So that right there is some of the best news that I have heard completely and totally all day long. Jose, its track is once again blessedly starting to curve upwards by just a little bit. And by the time we work our way into around Friday afternoon, there is that possibility that we could see this thing east of the Leeward Islands becoming a major hurricane hurricane that's category three and above so that again could be a bit of a problem there dana thorpe chisholm welcome from uh grenada mississippi hope i'm saying that right in kansas it's granada i know that much but uh probably different pronunciation down here uh mike lanius j rod in the house not too sure about that specifically but thanks a lot for uh, dropping by for tonight. Again, what's left of Jose as it drops down to just a hurricane status should be on its way back down to the uh, should be heading back over toward around very close to Bermuda. So hopefully it's going to thread that needle between the East Coast and Bermuda over the next couple of days. But so far, uh, Jose does not look to be a threat to the coastal United States. So definitely good news where it comes to that. Now, of course, the big one at this time, uh, if you are going to be keeping track of this, I've been in contact with several friends and family, and as has my wife, her aunt down in Sarasota, Florida. Again, uh, hopefully everything goes well in that area. But so far, the news tonight has changed. As you might expect, it does that. The forecast wobble back and forth based on the latest information. That's not fake science. That's not fake news. That's the way the best technology in the world works to help to predict where these things go. So before anybody starts throwing, away, throwing the fake science monikers on there, I want to cut you off right there and show you that that's not the case at this time. M stands for major hurricane, and it looks like this is going to be a major hurricane right back on up to the time that it coasts right along the north coast of Florida, hits the Keys, and right on into Miami around Sunday afternoon or so, making landfall in Florida. Uh, looks like it's going to be threading the needle right through the Grand Bahamas and Cuba, making its way up the east coast of Florida right now, heading up toward Georgia, and quite possibly... Uh, the south coast of the Carolinas. So, uh, Katie Clary, if you're watching tonight from South Carolina, again, please use caution. Hope you, the husband, and the dogs are able to get uh, where they need to go to in short order. If you're heading anywhere in this location, anywhere from Key West northward all the way up into around Charleston, South Carolina, the Outer Banks of North Carolina, D.C., Chesapeake Bay, anything like that, I would be very careful and maybe try to stay uh, west of a line from, say, Mobile, Atlanta, Knoxville, all the way up to around, again, just anything west of that line just to be on the safe side where it comes to travel. This is a monster storm, 185 mile per hour winds, uh, damage reported down to around Barbudos, uh, Barbudo, if I'm not mistaken, and across some of the areas there east of Hispaniola. This again could be uh, a record shattering storm in many respects. So this is again something you want to try to avoid if at all possible. We'll talk more about what uh, the officials are doing in advance of this when it comes to sports in just a little bit. So stay tuned for more on that. Let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on here in the Mid-South area. High pressure and a lot of it is going to be making its way over the Mid-South area and that's going to be keeping things very nice, very dry for a decent amount of time right on in through the weekend. So looking good. Angie Rose, welcome to the show. Uh, Kanya Alicia Shreve from, where does it say, Hardin County, Pickwick area. Thank you very much for joining us. I had to squint for a little bit. These bifocals are not all they're cracked up to be. We see again uh, just a dry forecast out there. There's little, if anything, going on in our near future that's really going to be causing too much of any other problems. And the National Weather Service agrees uh, with that scenario at this time. We're looking again at a lot of stuff going on down to around uh, Florida and the Keys 
We do have, again, uh, hurricane watches and tropical storm watches and warnings going on. Here in the Mid-South area, things are decently dry and quiet. And outside of last night's rainfall, there really has not been too much of anything uh, to worry about at this time. So the National Weather Service saying the probability of widespread hazardous weather very low at this point, so definitely good news on that. Becky Cody Donaldson, West Memphis, Arkansas, thank you very much for stopping by for tonight. Appreciate you watching the show. Let's go ahead and do some numbers here and show you a little bit more about what we're going to be expecting into the course of the next a couple of days. Let me bring this up full for our Facebook folks so they can see this just a little bit better. Those numbers are awfully small uh, on the screen at this point. Low temperatures tonight, very comfortable. Some 40s in northwest Tennessee and northeastern areas of Mississippi. Thank you very much. That should be feeling uh, very nice uh, for the area for tonight, but could mean a jacket for the bus stop for the kids tomorrow. High temperatures tomorrow, mid to upper 70s, plenty of sunshine, very nice. Low temperatures into tomorrow night, should be back into the lower to mid 50s, a few upper 50s possible for the metro area into tomorrow evening. For Friday, high temperatures back in the high 70s to around the lower 80s, and by Friday night, low temperatures back into the mid to upper 50s to lower 60s. The weekend, skipping ahead a couple days, back to around 80 degrees for East Arkansas, Northwest Mississippi, and the Metro upper 70s throughout the rest of the Mid-South. Saturday night, no problem at all. Cool temperatures back in the 50s, close to 60 in the Metro area, and heading for Sunday, temperatures back into the mid to upper 70s with no sign of rain across any portions of the area right on in through the weekend. That is a forecast I really like to give. Marilyn Pang from Senatobia, Mississippi. Thank you very much for dropping on by for tonight. Again, very quiet conditions into the Mid-South. Little, if anything, really going on uh, for the area at this time. A couple of things to touch on. The University of Memphis Tigers have moved up their game. It will be played Friday at 5.30 at Central Florida in Orlando. It was originally scheduled for Saturday, but once again, because of Irma making an appearance, uh, the Tigers are going to be moving that game up with the conference's decision and blessing and or whatever else goes into that, which I think is a very good thing. Again, just for public safety more than anything else, the mayor of Miami Beach issuing a very nice uh, letter on social media and especially to all the visitors of Miami Beach saying that we love you, but for safety's sake, get out now. It's safety's sake for that part. That's a very wise decision, so kudos to the mayor of Miami Beach on that. Uh, the University of Miami Hurricanes were going to be coming north to play Arkansas State that's not going to happen. They decided to cancel that game because they'd have to be going back into the storm about the time as it was going to be going toward Florida. Not enough time to get everybody to where they needed to be for safety's sake. So once again, a very wise decision out there when it comes to things involving storms and the safety of both the players, the officials, and the public when it comes to these things. So a very, very wise decision on that. Might inconvenience some people. It may not sit well with your pocketbook because you paid for tickets, but it does mean that people are going to be staying safer, and that's the important thing on that. If you'd like to read more on that, uh, more details from the Memphis Flyer and Memphis Magazine, Frank's, uh, Frank Murtaugh, about what happens with the decision to move the Tigers game from Saturday to Friday. And again, this has a lot to do, and some very good points on this thing where he's talking about the idea that it needs to be about more than just the money. It needs to be about public safety more than anything else. When you have 100,000 people watching a football game and a tornadic thunderstorm rolls overhead, you need a lot of time to get people out of there. You need to get people to safety. You cannot cram 100,000 people into restrooms in and around the facility or underneath the stadium. It's just not possible. Same thing happens uh, in downtown Memphis with large events. This is something else that needs to be addressed and Mr. Murtaugh does a very good job on this. If you'd like to see more about what that's all about, drop by. It's on the lower portion of my Facebook page. Just scroll down for a little bit. Also posted on my Twitter page as well. Lots of information on what's going on with Irma, Jose, Katya. Some really cool stuff. There's the letter right there from Mayor Philip Levine. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Uh, from Miami Beach. And a very, very well written letter that says, we love you. Thanks for coming. Now go away. Just for safety's sake. It works uh, pretty 
pretty well on stuff like that. Also, don't forget about my Periscope page, which hopefully some of you are watching right now. And, of course, my Instagram page. That's at Aonic, no underscore necessary, WREG3. If you'd like to see the seven-day forecast, that's available again at WREG.com slash weather from the News Channel 3 weather experts. And, of course, I'll have a lot more on the forecast bright and early tomorrow morning with Bob and Josh on Talkback Live. That's on AM 730, Yahoo Sports Radio. Or if you can't listen on the radio and want to listen online, TalkbackLiveNetwork.org. Great opportunity to get more there. Victoria Fondren, a uh, very nice wish uh, for everybody to stay safe down that direction. Likewise, a lot of friends and family, myself, down that direction. So let's hope everybody has, again, if they have the opportunity to get out, they should. This is not a storm to be messing around with. They need to basically just go ahead and scoot out of the path. I believe it was uh, comedian Ron White a long time ago who said, that it doesn't matter if the hurricane winds are blowing, it matters what the hurricane winds are blowing. And if you picture millions of pieces of debris, glass, metal, shards of palm trees, pieces of automobiles, all that flying around at 185 miles per hour, you don't want to be standing down there and saying, oh, I can handle it, don't worry about that. Also, all this talk that's down there about the government hiding details and things of that nature and fake science and things like that, I haven't heard anybody talking about that at this point in time. And if anybody does, it's a very irresponsible thing to say that, uh, we're, that the stuff is being faked just for climate science details. Not happening. Didn't happen with Hurricane Matthew. It's not happening now. If people are in the path of this storm, they need to get out of the way of this storm as soon as possible because soon it's going to be too late and they're going to be stuck down there and it's going to be very, very dangerous to ride through this. Worse than Andrew, worse than Katrina, it's going to be a just awful mess for a long period of time and it could be a fatal storm for a lot of people. So let's hope that everybody manages to get out of the way of this thing as it gets a little bit closer on to it. We'll have an update on all the tropics coming up tomorrow morning on weather overtime as well. And of course, Todd Demers will have more on Daybreak and Jim Jaggers will have more coming up on News Channel 3 at 10. So stay tuned for that. Again, social media here, here, and over see that way. And of course, our website, wreg.com slash weather for more information. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. Thanks for joining us for the latest edition of News Channel 3's exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime. A lot more coming up with News Channel 3 on air and online throughout the rest of the week and into this weekend.